Hello, everyone. I believe we're back. Apologies to technical difficulties. I had some issues with the other computer and had to switch over real quick, but we're going to get into this here in just a moment because it's Saturday night. It's anime time. We're talking about the holiday week. It's been a nice, relaxing week for me as well. Glad to hear you guys were able to have a, um, a not crazy holiday week, at least, with everything else going on. So we are here to talk about this little movie called Project Echo, uh, which is a 1988, I'm oh, sorry, uh, 86, I believe, absolute insane film. Um, just completely nuts. Um, what are your guys' impressions of Project Echo? Uh was trying to count the many, many different tropes, characters, the whole nine <laughs> yards in it, into it. I had seen, I, 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 I'd seen like clips of it before, so I was kind of familiar with it. And mm. I think I may have actually seen it back in the day, uh, back in the late nineties, perhaps. Not sure, you know, a little bit of a, you know, drinking going <laughs> on. At that time. Um, but, uh, but it was just, it just. It was great. It has such energy to it, and again, it's just funny just to watch things and just go, "Oh, that's creamy mom. Oh, that's that's, that's a version of Rama. That's that's this. That's that, and the other thing." And then, and just laughing through the whole thing. And just, I love parodies, and this was just oh yeah, just a wonderful, yeah. wonderful little parody. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, it was one another one of those um, kind of rando, like dealer room. VHS cassettes. <laughs> where just, right. it, you know, I mean, it was it's one of those things where it's like, you gotta see this. Be like, okay, I will. <laughs> and then picked it up, and it's like, ah, uh, again, no sub, no dub. Oh boy! Ooh. Wow. <laughs> so, sat and watched it with friends, and we were like, mm, okay. <laughs> so I watched it enough times to understand, you know, mm. just the general gist of what was going on mm -hmm. and it's another one of those where you don't really it's you know the all the punches are telegraphed you know yeah, pretty right. much so you can figure out little bits of pieces of who everybody is and it just plays along by itself it's great to watch mm -hmm. the frenetic activity all the the great mecha designs of stuff you know mm -hmm. i mean just oh yeah the mecha good fun yeah. yeah absolutely i mean i was not kind of expecting that and that was what sold me when the when i bought the cassette <laughs> was that oh you know it's it's funny but you're gonna love the mecha designs on like space battle kind of mm -hmm. stuff it's like okay yeah. <laughs> yeah um this is one of the movies that made me an anime fan i can see why actually yeah um this is one of the ones that played in in rotation on the sci-fi channels festivals of anime um really oh wow. yeah wow and uh it was um I just and I I grew up loving science fiction, and seeing a movie that just clearly loved science fiction as much as I did, but was also just making so much fun of it at the same time, uh, just really connected to me very 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 closely, um, because it's and I I had actually forgotten this when I went to watch it, um, the fact that it it opens with it's like seven minutes of space stuff. Of, of yeah. sci-fi uh, uh, elements, um, just kind of going on, doing his thing. Um, which is past. which is for me. I was just like, oh wow, okay. I, maybe they were wrong about how they described it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is going to be really cool. Exactly. It's 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 kind of surprising because like, okay, this is going to be a no. It's not really a parody. Um, mm. Doesn't seem to be because um, it starts off with this you know space shuttle getting exploded. Um, yes, there's something to the northwest. Um, I can't quite see it. it that seems was to be approaching quickly. <laughs> that oh. was cute. <laughs> I, I just, I just love this lack of coordinates. It's, it's coming from the northwest. For me, if you say that to me, I would have been like. <laughs> also, I also, what's northwest in space? Exactly. I, I uh, whatever. Up, up right. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was fun, that whole, you know, um, um, just, 
Yeah, it's coming pretty fast. <laughs> Boom. Um, which, again, gives you kind of the, the overall tone of what you're going to uh, uh, get. Because then we, you know, we get all the death and destruction. Um, and then we get schoolgirls waking up and going to school. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that's the whole point of this. And that's the, that is that yeah. moment where you're like, huh. <laughs> okay. Did this suddenly take a left turn for a reason? Or oh, yes. Let's, let's ride so, this so, see where it so goes. I can just only imagine having you no know, sub, no dub, and, and yeah. just watching this. And, and just your react. my reaction would be just like going, space battle. Okay, cool. What? <laughs> hey, hey, well, I mean, we, hey. Were, we were like totally stoked for it. We were just like, oh, mm-hmm. this is awesome. This is so cool. And then it stops. <laughs> I'm like, huh. Uh-huh. And, then, and then you have five minutes of a blonde girl scream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Echo, 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 echo. Um, well, and you know, you get uh, girls waking up for school, and then Echo proceeds to, you know, run up the side of the mountain, um, you know, like a character Man, from Ranma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and you're like, okay, this is, n- again, not the movie I thought I was signing up for. Yeah. Um, um, and, uh, well, I like the fact that that all happens in, like, absolutely no setup. Right? No, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just mm-hmm. like, hey, we're late for school. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, um... Why does Seiko? Why does, uh, is this why is normal? Seiko doing this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, doesn't mm-hmm. anybody else kind of notice that she's running at like several hundred miles an hour? That's unusual. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and she's and, and she's just running through people's homes, and, yeah, mm-hmm. and causing chaos and mayhem, and mm-hmm. you know, just like you know, faint calls over her shoulder. Sorry, as you know, yeah. So me, my bad. <laughs> Yeah, uh, absolutely. Oh, um, it's it's pretty nuts. Um, and then um, yeah, and we chug along, and, and of course now my my video freezes. Um, but yeah, the um, it's a weird movie um, because you have that, um, uh, and then you get oh no, I'm forgetting her name. Um, is it mommy? Uh, Give me mommy, the teacher. Yeah. No, no, no. Teacher? Um, uh, oh. Not that. Uh, the Fist of the North Star. Girl. Oh yes, Mari. Mari, okay. there we go. Mari. Yes, um, which totally threw me off when. Yeah, when, you know, I was like, I was like, "There's North Star. All right, okay. Wait, what? Wait, what's going <laughs> on here? Why is he in a scroll with a uniform?" And then you see the braided pigtail coming out of the back, and then yeah, and Fist of the North Star opens his mouth, and it's not a he, and it's a no. and just little gonna, voice. I'm gonna beat you up. Wait, oh. what? <laughs> Hold on. What did he say? Well, and and even better, you know. He, uh, he, he talks and that, and then he growls. Uh, 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 and the, I love the, that the pigtails are basically just mystical floating dots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not actually like connected mm-hmm. to anything. Yep. Just, you can see gaps between them. They just hover like mm-hmm. the back of Mari's head. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, because again, that's just kind of the you know that's the joke is that this is not. Um, and, and I think that, that is really your, your first indication in the movie that, um, there we go. Ah. That this is unusual. That this is unusual. <laughs> um, and that more importantly, that this is a movie, um, that is not taking itself seriously in any way, shape, or form. Oh, you know, no. where, you know, you, you have space stuff, and you're like, okay, it's, you know, there's a comedic aspect, and then you have Girl Running Up, and then suddenly you have Fist of the North Star parody. Um, and, like, when I was watching it, of course, I'd never seen Fist of the North Star, but I was like, this is a joke. I can tell this is a joke. Like, <laughs> you, are, you are telegraphing this successfully. Um, um, uh, and then you get, of course, the first big fight scene with, with Aiko. Um, and again, I think it's interesting how they kind of telegraph this, that all the scenes of Aiko running to get... Uh, to rescue Seiko are incredibly gorgeously animated. Yep. Yeah. Just like drawing it's, on ones. It's crazy. 
the, the thing about for me for parodies is that parodies are usually something where you're just like doing something that's going to be funny and you don't really need to pay attention to the animation right. or mm-hmm. that kind of a thing as long as you get the funniness across mm-hmm. the comedy across. Yeah. And the thing about Project Echo is that you are looking at beautiful animation, yep. whatever it is that you're looking at, whether it's the space stuff, the mecha. I don't know if you guys noticed in the credits, but it had it. The mecha had their own designers and character designers. Oh yeah, and things like that. And you know, so this was lovingly crafted, and mm-hmm. it, it's just it was just amazing. I was, and I really, I was like, oh, thank you, thank you. For yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Project Echo was one of those projects that just attracted all sorts of leading lights in animation at the time, where they were like, hey. Wow. Come work on this, and you know, uh, we'll all have fun together drawing this ridiculous stuff. Because the great thing about, about Project Echo is it, you know, th- there there's enough space, kind of, you know, if you want to do mecha stuff, if you want to do super superhero girl stuff, magical girl stuff, kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's just all sorts of, of, of things you can animate there, and apparently, for folks that took that took them on on that, because um, it well, just when, when Echo's running down the hallway to mm-hmm. get to Seiko yeah. to stop the fight. Yep. I love the the jumping out the window mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where she turns and pivots, and mm-hmm. you just the fluidity of her crouching yes. to then jump out the window. It's like, mm-hmm. wow, you guys yeah. really like really visualized how you were doing this, and then just nailed that down to get that spring motion. That's like, wow, jeez, and it's job. One, and it's one of the interesting things. Like this movie is so cartoony in a lot of ways. Um, uh, you know, Seiko, obviously, um, <laughs> Vigo's obsession with Seiko, which we'll get yeah. to, um, and, uh, you know, just the action and so forth, but the fact that they ground the action in such thought towards momentum and gravity and all that yeah. stuff just really sells it. You're absolutely right. Um, and I think it's one of the, one of the reasons why people, like, saw this movie and it, it feels so special because there is all that attention to detail to it. Um, and then we get the scene I'm going to have to skip past real quick um, of, of Biko thinking to herself about Seiko and how much that she ha- Seiko has to be hers. Um, so we got to talk about the backstory of Project Echo for a second. Um, the team that worked on Project Echo before making Project Echo made a segment of a, um, uh, a series of OVAs for adults, shall we say. Ah. Uh. Um, and huh. this was going to be huh. another in that segment. And, and the segment that they done was this kind of goofy sci-fi thing with, you know, girls falling into each other and then, you know, um, doing the kinds of things that happen in adult love yes. And uh, it's stuff, exactly. <laughs> and the, um, and when they um, conceived Project Echo, and I don't know all the backstory, but it, it evolved into, you know, a, an all-ages kind of a thing. Um, and this scene is one of the, the sequences that they left in, basically, which is going to be about how much, how much Biko really wants Seiko. Um, and so and that, in all fairness, you know, having watched more of it, it's, it's highly suggestive. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But completely, like, non-graphic. True. So that, yes. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you... If you can get what's being inferred by what's going on there, you, mm-hmm. you can you can add more certainly than to what is actually shown. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It was it was kind of interesting. Um, um, uh, but yeah, uh, totally. Um, and I'm I'm scrolling back to see some of the the chat. Wesley saying that uh, uh, the Echo series was the studio trolling the community because some of the nonsense going on was so ridiculous, uh, which is definitely true. Um, <laughs> And we definitely want to talk about the soundtrack in a little bit. Um, it's well, no Megazone 2, 3 soundtrack. Yeah, true. But, you know, Absolutely. Good. <laughs> um, and I just love the way this movie um, is paced. Because uh, after this we have them going out in the town. And having them chat while the screens behind them are talking about the, the lost ship. Yeah, the ship. Uh, yeah. All that kind of stuff. The just deep to, space probe that's mm-hmm. gone somewhere. Yep. Um, just sort of layering that in where you know what's going on, but you see that they don't know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, it's just, just lovingly done. And boy, do they not know what's going no! on. No! Yeah. No! 
no, they do not care. Um, and then Eiko, you know, rescues Seiko. Um, various folks are in the crowd. Um, and then we get to meet uh, Captain Harlock. I'm sorry, Captain Napolitana. <laughs> yeah. Um, who, what Harlock would look like as a woman. If, yes. Well, well, we'll get to that, too. Um, <laughs> um, no, it's fine. Um, and Napolitano... Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> and in, in case folks are, are curious, he's, yes, he looks kind of like Napolitano, but he's, he's um, kind of posed like Char Aznable as well. Like, his ship is very sort of Xeon. Uh, because they, uh, he, that is uh, Char Aznable's voice actor in the original Japanese... Uh, so yes, so they were kind of playing on that a little bit as well. Yes, apparently. Um, well, also, hey, can the ship be any more Battleship Yamada? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, slightly. Which we, of course, know the Battleship Yamato and Captain Harlan. Oh, like they're all sort of in there. So yeah, exactly. It's a thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, and so again, we're getting this, this idea that they're just sort of layering parody on top of parody on top of parody. Yeah. Um, um, and then we get, uh, the final reveal about Biko's past and the fact that she was an annoying little kid. Um, <laughs> and the first of the, the great face-offs between Eiko and Biko. Uh, it should also be pointed out, by the way, um, uh, so Cole is a Japanese, um, sort of ending word for girl. So... You know, a, a, a girl's often named you know, Akiko or whatever. So you often see Ko at yeah. the end of girls' names. So in a script for a, a movie, if you have just like a random girl, she will be Eiko, Eiko. Biko, Siko. Uh, right? It's like Soldier A, Soldier B. So the uh, joke of this is that this is just random girl A, random girl B, random girl C, except <laughs> they happen to be like the most powerful girls in the universe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and so Biko reveals the mecha that she built overnight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, fit of madness. I love how like, every time she's making something, she goes a little... Yeah. You know, like, like crazy, a little twitchy. <laughs> <and> <laughs> moody. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then it completely fails. Um, and so she goes back to... The, and there's, there's that looniness. Um... And uh, she has to go back to the drawing board and figure out how she's going to kill Aiko this time. Um, oh, just then... like, there's, there, there's no story in, like, why aren't you just trying to, like, focus on Seiko and mm. be, like, lure her away with candy or, uh, or something? Uh-huh. Instead, you're like, I have to build, like, a murder machine to kill this <laughs> <girl."> <laughs> I'm like... Well, that's, well and, a, that's a bit and, of a and, jump, and, 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 that, and that's what I love is that that's the, isn't that the the plot of every shonen anime ever, right? Like we right. can't actually go and get the the you know the the evil sword of, of forever. No, we have to like meet each other on the street and fight for twenty episodes. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, she went for she went from the typical. Like Bika went from the trip, typical of I'm going to set up a scenario where I look like the the, mm-hmm. the heroine and I'm going to get Seiko and she'll be mine by yeah. using mm-hmm. Tran just in the North Star over here <laughs> and you know and and I'm gonna and then she jumps from that to yeah but it's the murder machine, murder machine. And <laughs> it's just like is it and it's just like it's just like we there was no middle ground we went yeah. from okay innocent kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, rom- rom-com story to, hey, we're gonna kill somebody here <laughs> and because it's like, because what, what happened because to I really regular... want I, <laughs> right right because yeah. I really want I really want the little blonde girl who does this all the time. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. so mean oh my god! To me. Somebody in the chat said that I was grading, and I and I will admit that for the first like five minutes, I'm just like that in the classroom, and I'm just oh yeah. Like, why I was drinking during this movie probably was because I was <laughs> and, it was a coping mechanism for that. And that's one of the things I, I and I had the exact same reaction the first time I watched it, and then when I came back I realized, oh no, that's the joke. It's a joke. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why would anyone like Seiko? Like she is the yeah. most annoying character in anime history. Um, but for some reason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for some reason everybody loves her. Yes. Uh, yeah, and, and the fact that she sleeps with her eyes open? Yeah. Uh, um, that was a little creepy. Yeah. That scene. 
She's special um, in many, many ways. Many ways. <laughs> I also love the fact that, again, they're having fun with things, that, uh, that uh, the, uh, this mecha is defeated because it's just terribly designed. They're like she can't yeah. reach the, the 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 one you know activation lever. Yeah, and what's up with the deer striker on one part? <laughs> yeah. There's like a lantern behind her. Um, and, and I've never you know this would be one of those. What was the um, pop videos where they would go? It was it was like on VH1 or something. Oh it was, yeah, it was pop up videos, pop up videos, and show you. And a music video, and then it would tell you information about bits and pieces of the music uh, video. I was okay. like, oh, yeah, yeah. You... this is in the background because of such mm-hmm. and such. You need a pop-up video with that to be like, okay, oh, yeah. what's the deer striker? <laughs> what's the joke with the deer striker? And, and what's I, the joke with the lantern? <laughs> like, and and I suspect just the joke is that you know she threw all this together in you know twelve hours. And so everything's kludged together, and it's just every possible <laughs> nutty thing, you know, cuckoo clock, right? Just yeah. to... <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't touch that. It controls the environmental control. <laughs> yeah, system. exactly. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, whereupon Echo trips it. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just like, kick the leg out. <laughs> on with your day. Like, wow. Whereupon Biko completely loses it. Um, because uh, Echo finally makes it to school on time. Yeah. Isn't that she wonderful? Angry. <laughs> she angry. She was just like, I fu-. you know, honestly, mm-hmm. I kind of commiserated that with that a little yeah. bit. Because, you know, I was kind of notorious for being late and uh. back in school. And so I can understand, like, being the happy, like, that one day where you're just like, mm-hmm. I made it on time. Credit, give me credit for this. Give me credit for this, and it all came together yeah, so, for once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Aiko's just like, see, I get, I get. Oh, you, oh, you go. <laughs> that's it, that's it. <laughs> um, and again, you know, the fact that you know what defeats this thing, her rage at being late for school, the final time, and oh my gosh, how many months did the animator work on this sequence? Um, you know, Abeko flipping over these things and throwing them against each other and all that. It just goes on. What is um, beautiful. It's fantastic. It, it's, it's just, and there's, they, I mean, literally, the robots are hardly doing anything. <laughs> but just the, the, the kinetic mm-hmm. motion of Eiko just moving is beautiful to watch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? It's just gorgeous. Um, uh, and again, I think it... it, it it's important. One of the things that the, the movie is is helping us do is this is payoff, right? We have all this scene of buildup of frustration on both parts, and these mecha. What's going to happen? And again, um, I think what was smart is that in the earlier segment, the joke is we have all of the all of these powers, and she trips it and f- falls over. This time, no, 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 no. She's going to fight and annihilate these things. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it would not be the last time she does that. Um, also, I should point out, if you didn't know this already, um, I happen to be not showing any of the shots with panty flashes, which surprises me. Um, no because oh, no. practically every know, action right? shot in this, she flashes her panties. Uh, yep. which again, is kind of the joke. Um, and then, <laughs> oh, the moment, uh, when Biko reveals that she's, she's not done yet. Um, and she shows us her, her battle outfit, um, <laughs> which, which again, which I can't again give you a shout out. Is, is the slap in the face to every time you have an anime where some, <laughs> you know, female shows up and she has a breastplate that's literally just a breastplate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yep. okay, we're in armor. Wow. You'll look like a paladin wearing a bikini. Yeah. You are a paladin wearing a bikini. <laughs> wearing a bikini. <laughs> but like, you, how, what? You get sliced across the middle. And then there's Biko where you're like, oh no, <laughs> I get the joke. I, I see it. This, <laughs> this was an early dub and it has its ups and downs. But hands down, I think my favorite moment in the dub is when she reveals this and Aiko reels back and goes, you're cold in that? Cold in that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and then, uh, yeah, they, they, they face off. Um, and I'm trying to remember. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we have that. Um, I had to assume. Oh, that, and then, again, this is the movie. 
they face off, and we cut back to the sci-fi action. Yep. Um, and this is where the movie kind of goes, in, and this is where you really see the Yamato. Um, and this is where I, like, I honestly felt a little emotional. Um, because, you know, you have this showdown between the space station and the evil spaceship, and those people die. Yeah. Right. You know, um, and they're not just sort of random people out there in space. Like, you get to know them a little bit, you get to see them a little bit, yeah. and they just get annihilated because of this sort of misunderstanding. And um, they're not, it's, there's no setup at all of, these are the evil military people. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that are doing things up there. And this is, yeah. you know, this is kind of, it's terrible, but it's kind of justice because they're mm -hmm. bad. Yeah, like, no. No. They're literally just people working on a, on a orbital platform. Yep. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you, you know, know like, mm -hmm. it, it's like the whole scene of where they're like, yeah, it's incoming in 30 seconds. It's like, you know, our death is imminent in 30 mm -hmm. seconds. And everyone's just like, you know, really calm about it. Send out the fighters, whatever. And you mm -hmm. know, the big battle happens. And then, you know, and then it's just like, you know, across where the crew of was, the yeah. crew is like, <laughs> is like all women, right? right. And, like, well, I, and, and so so here's where the parody comes in. So that they're all women. You're just like, oh, it's like Macross. So they're all women. So, you know, they're not going to die. Mm -hmm. no, no, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Which that that scene that you mm. got up, Brent, is just oh beautiful. It's some mm. beautiful stuff, right? There. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. Well, in this whole sequence, and and as you said, it is it is just Macross, just straight up. Yeah. You know the way the missiles fly, the designs of the yep. ships are very Kamori esque. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. It's 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 kind of crazy, and and again, I think even even deeper that is kind of the, the joke is that you know. You know, Macross, we heroically managed to fight off the Zentradi for 50 episodes. No, you would have just get, gotten annihilated in episode one. Yeah. Like, that's what it should have <laughs> happened, right? You know? well, well, and that's actually, and do you, did you guys catch how at the, the, the Constellation, the Deep Probe ship got destroyed? Mm. And, you know, Captain Harlock saying mm. they're on the bridge and they're like, and the crew is saying to him on the evil spaceship going, uh, I think we just hit something. Did we hit something. Yeah, not sure yeah. Something. Yeah, I think we hit something. They're like, did we? I, I, I don't know. Okay, whatever. We're, we're just going uh, to yep. keep on going. Whatever what that was, speed bump. Mm -hmm. you know, it was probably some man, man ship with 5,000 people. <laughs> you know, right. Who mm -hmm. cares? Yeah. Um, well, and, and, you know, fully undercut by the fact that he he, he fires and what is the thing is, you know, we don't have time to, to negotiate like civilized people. Blow them away. You know, oh yeah, uh, barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you didn't say the anything. princess. Now, yeah, and that's and that's the interesting thing too. Is like the mm -hmm. stated goal is to save the princess. Mm -hmm. It's not to destroy Earth. No, it's not to kill no, no, everybody no. on the planet. It, <laughs> and it's just again, like we were talking in Megazone two three. This is a moment where somebody makes a subspace telephone call and says, "Hi, mm -hmm. we don't want to <laughs> shoot at you. Don't shoot at us." Somebody we think. You know, landed on your planet. Can you help us? All yeah. we want to do is take them home. That's it. No conflict. No nothing. And it's mm -hmm. th th here we have we a want. war. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, this is all we want. Look, look, look. Which she's annoying. She cries a lot. She just over. <laughs> she can't cook. She can't mm -hmm. cook. She's poisoning people. Yeah. You just give her back to us. We'll take her off your hands. There we'll we go. Be More okay. trouble for you, you than know. you need. So give her home. You know? And let her say, which help again me help you. is yeah, the exactly. joke, help me right? Help you. <laughs> which you know. <laughs> Should happen in every anime series, but does it? No, of course we no, have to have no. a giant, giant fight. Um, but did anyone? Did you guys get confused with who the princess was? Oh yes, my first yes. thought it was was that it of course was it's Aiko. Uh, yeah, right. And then it's Seiko, and I'm like, well, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure that was deliberate. Is that you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. Big space princess. Well, Aiko has the powers. She's unusual. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. But, no, no, no. They no. want the they want the the whiny girl. Um, <laughs> That's uh, a special power. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, literally. Um, uh, and then we cut back from that to I'm gonna say it one of the greatest dual sequences in anime. Yeah. It's um, pretty damn cool. 
of Aiko and Biko fighting in, in the hallways of their school, uh, just completely trashing their high school. And I'm sure there were at least a few high schoolers watching this going, yeah! Um, yeah. Uh, I, felt, as I felt bad for the tankers. The guys in the tanks. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're just like, they're just like, no, no, no. We're, we're in a tank to do it. It's just, 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 just stop. Yeah. Off they go and they, they're killed by, you know. Yeah. Like, you girls got to get out of here. <laughs> here, mm-hmm. pump the tank at that thing. <laughs> yep. So, and, and, and again, you know, love this element is that, you know, Eiko and Biko don't even realize there's an alien invasion going on. Their duel just continues and they're just throwing tanks at each other to try to, to, to kill each other. Um, and that isn't even, even isn't even enough. Um, uh, you also have that that gorgeous reveal of the ship, the the four yeah. mile long battleship, oh, um, which just keeps on coming and coming and coming. Um, which I swear is also a Macross thing. Oh yeah, because yeah, I definitely. think <clears throat> in Do You Remember Love when Medoza's mm-hmm. ship shows up, mm-hmm. you see in darkness nothing and then all of a sudden you see the giant yeah. reflector ray show up and then the whole thing starts to reveal back from shadow yep. it's just like oh, oh yeah oh I, I am sure this is a do you remember love reference yeah. uh totally uh and then that that gorgeous space fight sequence with the fighters and the, the oh man uh they're jumping from plane to, and she's jumping from plane to plane and like each pilot is oh. just like yeah, you know they, they they get the reward of the of the pantsuit shot, and they're just like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. And then like thirty, they like, die. not even three <laughs> seconds later, they just blow up, and, mm-hmm. and like a- you know, Aiko is just like going, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> plane to plane, okay. like, and getting okay. oblivious to like what's going yes, on. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, have to, I have tempted. I, I was half I, not to. I, I was half expecting her to like, call over show rather like dying from. You know, missile <laughs> in the sternum going, you know, sorry. Sorry, exactly. <laughs> sorry. And this is probably where the, the movie gets its most cartoony in terms of, you know, physics and such. Because she's literally leaping from missile to missile. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, it's obviously, it's fun. Um, but it's like, and you, you can totally tell this is a writer's room moment. Where it's like, okay, how do we get her from there to there? We have to figure out some way of getting her there because they wouldn't let her and they wouldn't let her and how do they do that? Oh, just come up with something. Um, and boy, they did. Um, and then you get, uh, yeah, Biko in there. Um, and, and here's where they first start hinting the uh, the big reveal from later because all the soldiers come out and they're all female. Yeah, um, yeah. And that was where I was like, wait, that's interesting. Those are all female soldiers. I wonder why that is. Um, and then we... I think it's Poor right after, and then right after that we get the reveal of D, um, and yeah. D without the the, the suit on. Um. Yeah. <laughs> if 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 this is your first time watching Aiko, just just it's okay when you're gonna have the reveal when you're gonna go yeah. wait, 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 what 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 <laughs> it's okay uh-huh. it's okay yeah. it'll be okay. Mm-hmm. He has great fashion sense. He, well, he definitely has a fashion sense. Um, yeah. Um, and so it just gets crazier, crazier. I also love that when Biko finally finds Seiko, she sees like the the glass force field, and then just like, uh, unloads missiles on it two inches away from Seiko's yeah. face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and all Maybe it not. does is break the glass. Yeah. Basically, right. straight down. It doesn't blow in and like shatter all over Seiko. It's, ah, magic glass. It's fine. It's a spaceship. It does things. It's right. Anime. Mm-hmm. Totally. It's anime. Um, it's anime. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and then Biko discovers the thing, and we get her fight with D, which again, you know, to your point, um, as silly as it is, there is a weight, there is a physicality to this fight. Yep. Um, where you re- you feel every hit. You feel what's going on. Yeah. Um, and, of course, yeah. it also happens to be cutting away Aiko's clothing uh, yeah. because it's anime. Um, giant, giant sword slice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, um, and then it just continues, continues on uh, until we get to the bridge sequence. 
Um, and I, I love this because, again, this is one of these science fiction fans. These guys are clearly science fiction fans because we've all seen those sequences where people are shooting each other on a ship. And we've all thought, that seems dangerous to me. And sure enough, you know, they get into a firefight on the bridge and it ends poorly. Um, that's not something well, you want to do. It, it, it wouldn't have, arguably, <laughs> yeah. with a handgun. True. But it's when the captain whips was out, out the, the, the machine gun. gun. The laser machine gun. Out of, like, nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> this is like, oh, now that is a bad idea. <laughs> really bad idea. And, and I love how they, how they never clearly define, don't hit the thing, the thing. Right, hit yes. Thing yeah. that, mm -hmm. that Biko is standing behind. Don't hit mm -hmm. it. D, what are you doing? What are you doing with the handgun? Don't do it. Okay, here, let me do the laser yeah. bum, cannon bum, bum, thing. Bum, 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 and, then, mm -hmm. and, oh, no, I hit the thing. You never know. It's, it, the thing is never explained yeah. to you. Yeah. But once the thing, the thing is hit, you're like, Oh, I actually did not have to need that, that explained to me because <laughs> yeah. now we know what happened. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, Universal MacGuffin. Um, <laughs> uh, totally. Uh, which causes the, you know, the, the big apocalyptic um, ship to crash. Um, amidst this, uh, you know, somebody put in the chat, um, uh, you know, the most 80s soundtrack, uh, oh, which God, is I loved it. very true. Um there are, I mean, John, you actually put that in the, in the soundtrack, uh, or in the, in the chat, yeah, it's, and it's interesting because, like, it's not 80s in the sense of, like, um, like, pop music, um, yeah. you know, it's 80s in the sense of just that, you know, that, uh, the drums, and the, the, the synths, oh, and all oh, that. Oh, I had a total Soul Train thing going on. Mm. Mm -hmm. I had a total soldier like 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 it was like the beat and the music I was like it was like you know it was like watching Soul Train the one you know white girl on there going, <laughs> you know yeah awesome oh it, it's great um um and then we get our, of course our Daniel Ma of everyone going back where we get the reveal um uh I don't know how many folks watching this notice this as she, as Aiko is running off, um, you see her parents, one of whom is a very stocky gentleman in glasses, um, one of whom is a woman holding up a uh, red and blue uniform and who looks suspiciously like a certain Diana, um, and uh, we, we discover that her parents are Superman and Wonder Woman, which kind of does make sense. Um. <laughs> Except for not being able to fly. True. True. You know what I mean? You think she would come I mean, at that part too. Uh, she basically can. She can jump as, as uh, you know, <laughs> eighty feet in the air. Right? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and we get we get that uh, <laughs> that great image of the the spaceship just you know sitting there, sitting on the on the top, on just, the top, just, just, just whatever. Um, well, one of the things that you you don't get from mm -hmm. just watching repeatedly non dub non sub, no, yeah. Is the fact at one point in time the captain says, "Is that like a De Gaulle's class ship?" Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it, mm -hmm. It's like I could kind of piece that together because it was you know you have an average like human city and this weirdly funky mm -hmm. tower in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, yep. what's the chances that that's the alien it's, something that hit yeah the city? It's like, the SDF one. And then one. finally, in yeah, in like now like this, they're like, "Is that a ship?" And I'm like. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you have a ship on your ship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and then everything is, you know, back to normal. Everything's fine. Um, everything's good. Um, except Biko is there the, waiting. The, the, the universe is closed. <laughs> Please donate. Guys, yeah. yeah, hanging out. Well, in um, the explosion, I don't remember the bridge separating itself. I saw <laughs> right. the front end of the ship go off, mm -hmm. and yet the bridge magically lands at school. Mm -hmm. Even though the way that the main ship is oriented, they should yeah, have no. shot off in that shot to the left. No, there's no <laughs> way. So, Absolutely no way. Kind of boomerang the bridge back into school. And, and then <laughs> just having that one beautiful little touching scene of Seiko is going, Yo-ho! <laughs> Yo-ho! Oh, yeah, like shut up, shut up. The first two times she did it was fine. Oh, just shut the hell up. And that's that's when the Earth forces who are just got their butt whooped just said, 
to your guys' points, why didn't they just phone us and say they were this little brat? <laughs> just just send her. Take her. <laughs> we will wrap her up and don't and just get her to you right here, please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, which also reveals why you know Seiko is not really the main plot point of the later Eiko movies. Um, like she's there and she's she's around, but it's not about her because you know you can only take so much Seiko. Yeah. Um, except for uh, Grace Edwards' Blue Side, that's true. That that is very much a Seiko oriented thing, but it's a sort of alternate universe, so it gets it gets weird. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if if you enjoyed Echo, um, the sequel movies are more of the same. Um, I would say they're not um, uh, they're not quite as well sort of structured. Yeah, they, they don't provide quite the same experience the first movie does, uh, but they're definitely very much in the same in the same mold. Uh, oh yeah, so you once you get the... to Project Echo uh, VS mm-hmm. fives, I guess yep. I don't know, it just <laughs> gets really difficult to watch yeah. um and i think that's gray side versus blue side which is the sort of echo and Biko in space um yeah spinoff like well, it, it, hanging universe, out basically. and doing stuff together yeah it's just if we said about this before it's basically echo and Biko as dirty pair um which is <laughs> yeah it's a fun take on it because at that point you're like how many of these can we make um so they had to, to sort of make a left turn um and it's you know um, it's fun, um, but it's it's different. Um, yeah. And and Endman uh, uh, is right. The, the the budget is not as high for the later ones. Oh, no, um, yeah. But because I, I don't know yeah. much of any other animated films outside of Ghibli that have an animation budget like this. <laughs> Jeez, um, it's nuts. Um, and you're right, Game Escape in the chat. Um, um, this did feel like a call to arms to the anime industry of saying, "Hey, here's what we can do." Give us the money. Give us the budget. Here's what we can actually, you know, achieve um, over the course of an entire movie. Because you'd had segments like this in Macross and New Ever Love and things like that, um, but they were relatively isolated. Uh, where now they are much more integrated into these long, extended scenes. Uh, and it's also should be pointed out one of the things that really impressed me about Echo is how on model it is. Um, you know, as cartoony and as goofy as the characters are, it doesn't feel like, oh, this is that guy's cut, that is that guy's cut, that is that guy's right. cut. Right. It feels very much of a, you know, um, um, uh, of a kind all the way through. Um, I guess partly because it is kind of a goofy, plasticky kind of a, right. a universe, but still, very impressive. Um, and all done 2D on cells. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot wow. of cell work, man. A wow. lot of cell work, just wow. nuts. Um, Although I would have to say that if I were Seiko and I were looking up at the the pink whirly bird thing, yeah, that is being powered <laughs> by Mari, who's powering by who's, who's grunt, who's grunting through the whole thing, and mm-hmm. there's this whole. It seemed like it took forever to convince Seiko to come up onto the airship and the whirly bird, whatever. Yeah. And so finally, what took it was Mari giving the grimace of a smile, like, hey. and, you, and she's like, "Okay, I'll come up." I'm like, like "No, if someone if, if that gave me that smile, I was like, yeah. I would probably be like, you're going to eat me.' No, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I, I would exactly. want to, to take a ride with you. Yeah, um, there it is. Yeah, it's it's a, um, and I still haven't figured out what is that because that that feels like a reference to me. Um, like that that whirly gig thing. Yeah, it's got to be from something, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah I it's don't very know. specific considering that um, Biko has created all these you know wacky machines that are obviously internally powered somehow, mm-hmm. and yet here we have this giant flying pink elephant. Yeah, that is physical <laughs> powered. That seems <laughs> kind of not exactly in Biko's kind of no. realm of functionality. Not at all. Um, so yeah, what's your reference? And um. I would have thought, um, no, um, I would have thought it might have been a, uh, a Nadia reference, because, you know, they have the, the, the uh, giant, you know, thing, yeah. but Nadia is hmm. not for years later, so, I don't know, yeah. um, but uh-huh. yeah, it's, uh, oh cool, I made an impression on your mom, man, that, that's awesome, um, there was something else I wanted to mention here, um, yeah, it definitely makes an impression, no question there. Um, oh, what was it? Dang it. 
wanted to point out something about um, uh, the whole thing, but it's not there, so I guess I'm not going to be able to, which is unfortunate. Um, oh yeah, um, there are quite a few, as we mentioned, quite a few jokes and references in this. Um, when Aiko and Biko are out of the town, um, they go and they watch a movie. Um, um, you know, the, 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 hilarious where she yes. gets scared at the, in mm-hmm. the movie and she screams yeah. and you're, and you're yeah. just like, <laughs> okay, wait a minute. You're just like super powered and you just beat the yeah. holy heck out of the, these can't handle because you know. the sh- machines yeah. and, and you're on this, on this date and, and this guy just appears on the screen and you the Colonel. And yeah. Colonel Sanders, <laughs> horrible monster in the alleyway. Have and, some of my fried chicken. <laughs> and, no, and by the way, all, it's bad the, for you. <laughs> um, the movie they're watching, I think that's Armageddon. Um, uh, it, 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 like it's an actual. It's they reanimated it, but it, it is right. a um, a a very specific reference to that that work. Um, that they're they're kind of reworking and just inserting Colonel Sanders into. Um, <laughs> although did you also notice? I'm 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 sure I'm not gonna be able to, to find it, but um, uh, Ten Ten from Ursa Yatsura is right behind Seiko's shoulder, I believe. Um, really? Yeah, and he's just you know sitting up there watching it. Uh, yeah. Oh <laughs> damn! I missed that. Um, uh, yeah, and like I said, there's there's no way it's gonna be able to uh, stop on that that one frame. Um, but uh, yeah, and there are a few other things. Um, in some of the crowd shots, there are folks who I'm like, I think that's one of the Maison Nakoku characters or something. You know, like all crushed yeah. up trying to do something. So there are a few of those there. If you're if you're watching closely and you're familiar with whatever you know, right. 1983 anime. <laughs> um, There's Easter eggs abounding. Oh. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it, it's a lot of fun. Um, um yeah so that is the um that is project echo it's a it's an experience <laughs> <laughs> it's an anime tour de force mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, if you want to laugh if you want if you want a parody if you want to you know that kind of a thing definitely definitely watch it mm-hmm. uh, if you're into older if you're into older anime if you like older yeah. anime you're definitely going to be rewarded mm-hmm. by this movie. This, yeah. this is this is just going to reward you up and down. And it's one of those that you don't honestly need to to know anything about what the plot is going on. You can just watch it and enjoy, enjoy it, it. Yep. for it for its like kinetic motion and yeah. just just absorb absorb the goodness that is the animation quality. Yeah. It's one of the great fun things about this is that. Uh, you know, you can enjoy it as a goofy comedy. You can enjoy it as a parody of science fiction. You can enjoy it as a parody of, of anime tropes. Um, you can enjoy it for just the insane action animation quality. Um, there's just a, there's there's a lot here to appreciate about about Echo. As long as you understand that you know, um, serious anime. This is not right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thankfully, this is not Grave of the Fireflies. No, but we will get to that. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh. God, that would be a horrible parody. Parody. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. Someone, that. Somebody probably, Jesus. like, pitch that idea and be like, let's lighten yeah. it up and do something funny. Well, and they probably slap, slap <laughs> them. I mean... No. True. Um, I mean, there, there, there's a Barefoot Gen uh, parody in AOB Hell Three, right? Oh, oh God, there no. is. Mm-hmm. There is. Oh, yeah. Why? Uh-huh. Oh, yep. There yep. There is. Uh huh. Oh my um, God. There, there's a there's a brief I'm Grave of the bleep. Fireflies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's actually a brief Grave of the Fireflies thing, but it's just you know um, a wacky song to like a character going back and forth like this in Grave of the Fireflies. It was just you know. Uh, Okay. Like, there's nothing, you know. Um, but yeah, it, it, mm-hmm. people have gone there. Which <laughs> well, just all that comes to mind is there's there's a meme that's Batman and Robin. No, oh, yeah, and, yeah, like Robin <laughs> says something yeah. stupid and he backhands it. <laughs> like all I can see is Robin being like, "Let's do a parody of Grave of the Fireflies." No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Totally, totally, totally. Um, oh, that's a good point, Ant Man too. Yeah, the the uh, the school is not unlike the school from Ursa Yatura. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. At front uh, portico area. Mm-hmm. Um, see if I can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which again, I'm, I'm sure is that thing. And like you were saying, Steve, the uh, the teacher is just she's creamy mommy, grown up. Yeah. Um, and I believe she has the same voice actress as Creamy Mommy as well. Um, oh, that's yeah. Um, and so that was kind of their, their having put of that. Also, something else I, I, I did want to uh, note, which I'll see if I can get a, a shot at here somewhere. Um, um, and which I think, again, it's one of the things they were kind of having fun with. Um, when you see all the other girls in school, um, I'm not going to get a good, good crowd shot. Um, most of the girls have, like, blue hair. Um, you know, the, 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 the amount of, the like, simple, hair. yeah, um, you know, just the amount of simple brown and black hair is about half of the, the, the class, and the other half has, like, some shade of blue for their, their hair color, um, which I thought was just, you know, again, one of these silly anime tropes, um, that they just kind of push up to 11, um, but again, I don't think I can get a, a still of that, um. You just want to buy the still of, of, um. Biko being creepy with the, you know, footage that was uh, obtained of Seiko. Oh, yes. Uh, and mm-hmm. the scene where, where you know, put in the, the, the CD or the DVD and mm-hmm. she's just watching Seiko in his dark room. It's just like... <laughs> yeah. It, Which, so again... It was, it was BD watching the people get killed in the... Oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, which, again, may have been an element from the original version that they was... I don't know. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Um, good old BD. Good old yeah. BD. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's not that time yet. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's a... Echo's a lot of fun. And the, thing, the other thing about Echo that, that's worth mentioning is, and the reason I include it here is not just because it's this fun, cool movie, but because it is sort of this encapsulation of the transition anime was going through at the time, where you have... Uh, what we've been seeing up, up to this point, you have sort of the, the more naturalistic animation of some of the 60s movies moving into the very, you know, TV anime style animation of the stuff yep. from the 70s and the early 80s. And then budgets start to really rise. And you see um, anime staff saying, hey, we can really do something special with anime itself. Uh, not trying to, pair, not trying to um, copy what the Americans are doing, not trying to copy what the Russians are doing. We're doing very much our own thing. Um, right. And so it's fascinating seeing that as this sort of time capsule of anime. Um, yeah, that's, that's Urza Yatsu. Uh, that's not, no, that's Project Deco. <laughs> wow. That's, that's Wait, how many things they're doing the here. the dream? Oh! <laughs> See, it all comes oh. together. It all comes together. When I woke oh, up this the morning. the back of a turtle. It, it felt oh, like yeah. I was, you know. That's okay. That's okay. Tomorrow is a school festival, and this will all be over. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Will. As long as we got the tank and the <laughs> right. cafe up and running, we're set. <laughs> what? Oh, that was a movie. Um, yes, it was. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a few minutes with uh, some, uh, some chat about what we're thankful for. In, in this season as 2020 is drawing to a close uh, and we'll be talking Hooray. about uh, and then some news we have some some happy news this week so uh, uh, we will see you all in a little bit please stand by <laughs> 